Hey, and welcome back to Wheat Beat. My name is Mike. Today we're going to do a little bit more experimentation. If you've been watching my channel, you know I love doing experiments when it comes to making changes, minor changes to your formulation and seeing what the outcome is. Well, today we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at proofing. Proofing is the step that happens after the bulk fermentation. So you mix your dough, you let it sit for a while, maybe an hour or two or longer, that's your bulk fermentation. And you might be introducing folds where you're strengthening the dough over time as it's fermenting. But after it ferments, you do a shaping step. That's where you actually make it into the final shape, whether it's a boule, like a round uh, loaf or oblong or anything else. Or in my case today, I'm gonna make baguettes. So they're gonna be long and slender. So what happens if you put it directly into the oven right after the bulk fermentation? What if you wait too long? We're gonna find out today what happens when you make these minor changes. So what we're going to do is make baguettes and I'm going to mix them together. The way I make baguettes is actually with a poolish and a levon, which is a sourdough. And uh, that gives it a little bit extra flavor without being sour at all. And then I'm just doing it my usual way. I'm going to mix everything together. I'm going to do a bulk fermentation for almost two hours with some folds every half hour. And then normally what I would do is I would divide the dough into uh, 350 gram pieces, which is traditional for a baguette. And then I would let them rest. And then I would roll them out into the shape of a baguette and let them proof usually around 75 to 80 degrees for about an hour and a half. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to roll out the baguettes and then I'm going to start by putting a baguette immediately into the oven without any proofing at all. And then we're going to every half hour in, in, uh, introduce another baguette into the oven until about three and a half or four hours have gone by. All right, we're still in the bulk fermentation and I'm just uh, doing some quick folds in here and this is uh, fermenting nicely. And uh, in about 45 minutes, uh, this will be ready to start rolling out. And then I'll start introducing the first baguette directly into the oven from the bulk fermentation without any proofing at all. All right, so I have already done all of the uh, shapings. I'm now doing the final one. And then uh, once I finish shaping this one here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, place it directly into the oven. So there will be no proofing at all. And then we'll start the timer and put them in 30 minute increments. All right, so normally I would now be finished with all of the shaping and I would put it into the proofer. And I've actually done that with the other baguettes that came before it. But before I put this in the proofer, I'm actually gonna take the first baguette out and I'm gonna put it directly into the oven, just like it was, uh, it was ready to go. Okay, so the first baguette is in the oven now. That has had no proofing at all. I'm about to put the rest of these baguettes into the proofer, and then we'll start taking these out in 30 minute increments, and then we'll stack them up and take a look at the results one by one as they come out. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. All right, so the, first, uh, so the first baguette is out of the oven, and now I'm gonna actually start doing two at a time and this is the 30 minute one. So we'll get these in, keep going. All right, we're on uh, the final batch and I've actually cut this whole thing short because they're just clearly overproofed. I just wanna point out what it looks like when the dough is overproofed. I'll be putting my finger in it like this and rather than it bouncing back, it actually just stays depressed and doesn't, doesn't actually rise back up to the top like it would if it was proofed correctly. So this is just an interesting thing to see. It's kind of like the tempur commercials, you know, like you put your, your finger or your palm on there and it just stays depressed. So this is definitely overproofed, and uh, this is where I'm gonna cut this off at three hours because anything more than this, and it's just, I'm just gonna have a bunch of ruined bread all around. All right, so the results are in, and as I mentioned, I already I cut this whole thing short because as I proofed more and more, it just became totally unusable. So this is the bread with uh, no proofing at all, went directly into the oven, and then each one here indicates another half an hour of proofing. So 30 minutes, 60 minutes. Um, after we get to about 
two hours, uh, you'll probably notice that these are getting quite dark. And the reason for that is that there is some malt in here and an uh, enzyme called amylase, which basically converts the starches in the flour into sugar. And that burns uh, fairly easily in the oven. And so as the proofing got longer, there was basically more sugar available that was getting burned more readily. At least that would be my theory why uh, it, it seems pretty clear to me that they get darker as they get closer to the right. Keep in mind that all of these were baked at exactly the same temperature at ex for exactly the same amount of time in the same exact location in the oven. So there's no difference at all between these in terms of bake time and temperature. The only difference is how long they proofed for. The other thing you'll probably notice is the lengths are different. So the one that was not proofed at all seems to be the shortest and then it get, they get longer and longer and then they pretty much stay around the same size, which is interesting. I didn't expect to see the length change. I thought maybe we would see a change in volume. The other thing to see is clearly the volume is different as we go over to the right. The more we proof, the more flat it becomes and the less volume there is. When we open these up, we'll obviously be able to see a little bit uh, more about what's going on inside. Right around an hour to an hour and a half seems to be pretty optimal in terms of the size, the length, and, uh, and the bake, which means you know not too dark and then not too pale and light like this one is here on the left. Uh, now that I've cut them open, we can see what the crumb structure looks like inside. And uh, here's just a very quick overview. I think uh, what it looks like to me is that w the, when there was no proofing, the, there's, there's a, a lot of larger bubbles and then a very dense area between them. There's not a lot of in-between. Uh, as we started to proof more, the um, air cells inside here start to get more even, I suppose. Over here, after an hour, they're, they're quite even, and then they start to stay even but get larger, which makes sense because it's proofing for longer. Uh, this is the one that was proofed for three and a half hours, and it's quite flat, but um, I'm, not, I'm not really quite sure how to describe this crumb as it's changing from uh, more proofing to less proofing. I think the most obvious difference was between no proofing and, and then everything else. But it seems to be the most dense around the hour mark, which is actually what I would find the least artisan, you could say. Uh, and so probably at an hour and a half, it's starting to look a little bit better or even two hours. I. I I personally like the uh, crumb structure a little bit better. So not a whole lot to say. Um, I think the images speak for themselves. I think what I'll do now is I'll taste each one of these, uh, wish me luck, <laughs> and uh, kind of give you a very, uh, very quick overview of how the tastes are different between all of these. And by the way, here's just the cross section of the loaves between the left side, which is no proofing, and the right side, which is two hours of proofing, you can clearly see how the crumb structure is different. All right, so I tasted the baguettes, and I gotta tell you, they all tasted more or less the same to me. What was different between them was more the texture. In the first one, where I didn't proof it at all, it was surprisingly very tough to bite into. The crust was very hard. The crumb was kind of dense and chewy and not a pleasant way at all. And as I got more towards the overproofed baguettes, the texture actually got a lot more tender and the crust got thinner and crispier and I actually preferred it quite a lot. It's just, of course, they were very flattened down and almost like a pancake and it wasn't at all what you would have expected. But the texture and the crispiness to it was more pleasant. Now, why did it flatten out so much? We talked about how it got burnt when it got overproofed, and that probably has to do with the amylase activity, the enzyme that converts the starch to sugars. More sugars means it burns more readily, but why is it flat? And the reason there is probably because of protease. So there's lots of enzymes in this bread. Protease is something, is an enzyme that also is functioning there is, during the uh, fermentation process and it breaks down the gluten into little pieces and it makes it much 
weaker and much more susceptible to collapsing because the substructure has been broken down basically over a long period of time by this enzyme. So that's most likely what happened there. So for me, the uh, I think kind of sweet spot for, for fermentation was right in the middle there around one to two hours. Now, obviously, it's going to vary if your humidity or your temperature or your other conditions, your hydration, all these different things, the amount of pre-ferment you use, the amount of yeast you use, all of those things are going to affect the rate at which your loaves proof. So you can do an experiment like I did, and that takes a lot of time, and most people aren't going to do that. What you could do is just use the finger test. So I, I showed you in the very last example how when it was totally overproofed, I put my finger, I depressed into the dough, and it remained depressed. It didn't, it didn't bounce back at all. Now I know from experience and I also know just from general knowledge that if you want to know if a dough is properly proved, you would insert your finger, indent the dough, and then when you take your finger back out, you would see that indentation slowly start to fill back up like you were filling up a balloon slowly. It wouldn't stay depressed and it wouldn't bounce back very quickly. If it bounced back very quickly, you're underproofed. If it stays depressed like that and doesn't bounce back at all, it's overproofed. You might not know this, but if your dough is totally overproofed, you can actually recover it. All you would do is you would take your dough, flatten it down, and add a couple of folds to it and then reshape it and give it some more time, that's actually a way to recover overproved dough. But we obviously didn't do any of that in this experiment. That might be something we might try in the future. So overall, this was a fun little experiment for me. It was interesting to see uh, the theoretical stuff uh, play out. I've never actually overproofed dough on purpose to see what it would do and it was just interesting to see uh, the, the crumb structure inside, how things changed as a result, and I didn't expect certain things to happen that, that happened and I showed you. So I hope that you found that kind of interesting. I'm gonna keep doing stuff like this. I'm gonna look more at how a mixing affects things, how the amount of salt affects things, how you know there's, there's all sorts of variables that we can add into this and just see what kind of effect it has. I mean, there's all that book smart stuff, the theoretical stuff that you read about, uh, and a lot of old wives tales too, you know, uh, oh, you shouldn't do this and you should do that. And there's not always a whole lot of science behind it. And I'm sort of, uh, with my science background, I really love uh, doing these kinds of experiments and trying things for myself. So I'm going to keep doing it. I hope you keep joining me for these videos. And until we meet next time, go out and bake something.